Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, if you don't have that model up from before, please call up any logic and load in the model. Some of you might be sitting at, at, at new uh, computers having enjoyed um, a measure of mobility, um, in which case I'd like you to, to open up your uh, uh, any logic and do file open or uh, recently open models. You might find it there. Okay. Um, otherwise, you should be able to find it, I think, in your downloads folder. Um, if you have any logic open, you don't need to do anything. We'll dive into it right now. Who needs a bit more time while they get any logic up? A bit more? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so I'll I'll start with a bit of narrative uh, description uh, associated with this, and we will um, uh, will then uh, go into some some specifics. So we're going to talk now about the AnyLogic interface. My goal in here is not to turn everyone into an AnyLogic user, but I want you to know enough to to be able to easily go through and inspect the models I'm showing you and, and drill down and find how does that work or to comfortably examine what they contain and understand the assumptions behind them. Is uh, Jason, is the audio uh, sufficient? Okay. Um, uh, are we okay now to? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, oh, oh, you have to go back to that computer? Okay, TAs, could someone help them? So, so, so find out what the, what the issue is on that computer. TA? Yeah. Okay. See, see if you can help them get onto that computer because. Uh, um, it's loading. He entered all it's just loading. Oh, it's slow. It's slow, yeah. Okay, that's interesting for an oct core um, with also, 16. I, I think it's a network issue, not a. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Okay, 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 that's. Yeah, that's, okay, that's, um, we should speak with the tech staff about that, that was, it seems anomalous. But, um, okay, so here, um, I just wanna give a few pointers on this interface, we'll be empowered to explore. I described the structure of an any logic model before, there's a number of features I haven't uh, discussed there, um, uh, but we'll be exploring in the course of the boot camp. Uh, a couple things to note. First of all, this canvas area can have different tabs to show different things at times. Um, generally, you want to be very careful what tab is open at a given time, and I often like to clean up tabs. If I haven't been using them for a while, I'd like to kind of um, just, uh, just clean them up. Um, when you click on a certain area here, like if I double click on person, it will use the canvas to whoa to call up um, to call up something to depict to that component. Now, when I so do, when I do that, and in, in so doing, it also is going to show in a properties window. There's a thing called a properties window aspects of what I'm selecting. So like I'm selecting person here, in this case over in this hierarchy window, and you'll notice over here in the uh, properties window, it tells me some information about this um, uh, particular um, thing that I'm selecting. We won't be using this uh, for this uh, as much on the left-hand side, but for example, if you select a scenario, you can change assumptions about what's represented in the scenario here, okay? Um, so, uh, so here, associated with each scenario, over in the properties window, it outlines the features. You'll notice that it, it puts in bold certain features. Those are ones that differ from the built-in values in the model. So the fact this is 10 is, different from the model original value of it. And it's sometimes useful to have one that's actually the baseline where nothing has changed from the model values and then the others are, have certain particular items changed. Um, there's principle of experimental design you can tap into in terms of your experiments. Um, so this, this properties window shows us properties of what we've selected over here in the projects window or indeed 
uh, in the canvas. So if we go select, for example, um, this energy expenditure item here, it will show me the formula associated with this flow here. And the formula is just weight in kilograms times this energy expenditure coefficient. Okay. And uh, what it shows me here will be different based, based on the uh, type of uh, situation. For example, if I select a state, it will show me different types of information than if I select, um, uh, select something in this uh, so-called action chart. So just be aware, the properties window will show you information about what you've selected either in the canvas or, or over here. And in general, you can um, select uh, items um, uh, in, in either of these places. Um, a couple other things. Sometimes it's inconvenient to be boxed in by so many windows. And so often uh, it's convenient to go to a particular item in this canvas, double click this, and uh, it will create a full screen view of it. Okay? That allows you to kind of zoom in on, so to speak, kind of focus on that particular component of the model. Um, it, it's still in context and all that sort of stuff, but it allows you to sort of see it in a, in a bigger screen way. And then if you click on it again, uh, it'll go back to its original um, size and you can see other things. So it lets you um, enjoy a bit of focus for a bit of time, maybe visualize it on a um, on a, on a screen and then uh, return to that. And uh, similar things I will note can be done with these other windows. So like if for some reason I want to um, you know, focus in say on the properties of a given item, I can double click on it and edit those and, and go back. Um, this is a bit of uh, administrative, um, but it's useful. Um, a couple other uh, features here. Um, so uh, one item is that uh, when we build models, there's something called the palette, which we will be using. Most of the time, in, it may not be shown, but if you go up to the view menu and you select palette, it will show an additional view, um, which is weirdly shown on a Linux machine, but, um, uh, but you have a palette view. And this will allow you to add things to the canvas. Um, we'll be at building some models this afternoon, and you'll see that then. Just be aware that you don't have to keep these windows around, and if you close it, you can always get back with the, with the view menu. And there'll be a problems window and a console window we'll end up using quite a bit, and sometimes a search window as well, and at a later point, maybe a GIS, um, GIS window. Um, there's some other features of this that I won't go into right now. Um, suffice it to say, for example, you can create documentation on a, on a model and you can interact with it um, uh, by searching for things. If you do edit, search, you can end up um, uh, searching for particular items. Um, here, you know, I can search for energy, for example. How did I do that? I can do edit, search replace, or I can just do control F. I think on Max it's what, Mac, uh, like command F? Okay. Um, I could say energy, for example, and it will search for me different items within this model that contain the word energy. Um, and as, as you could see, it finds out some parameters, um, some things in the state chart here, um, et cetera. So, um, just be aware you can, you can easily search the model to find certain things uh, and that's sometimes useful for, for locating items. Um, great. Um, in terms of running a model, we went through that before. You can, you can go right click on a, on a scenario to run it amongst other things. It's my preferred way. When this, this item comes up, um, uh, this uh, this window 
Um, there's a set of additional controls made possible. This is basically for running a model. And often this will include some specification of some assumptions as well. But um, one thing that it notably includes is the ability to speed up a model's execution or slow it down as desired to, to visualize it or to have it go as quickly as possible. This is what's called virtual mode, which will put it as fast as possible. It actually won't start running until you press run, but um, uh, this will make it go as fast as possible. Sometimes, though, you want to see it in, in slow-mo or, or you know, action, and so you want to use these other controls. This will stop it, um, and this will pause it. You can also, through this panel, engage in more detail, including the dive down, as we saw earlier. This is some output from it on the so-called console, and um, it's actually processing um, some events behind the scene as it uh, uh, explores the, the model. Um, so uh, this provides a little bit of a way of, of accessing the model. It's often useful to inspect the, the time up there and, um, and see what, what, um, what time we're at in the model. Pressing this button, virtual time, will run the model as quickly as possible. And sometimes it can go, you know, orders of magnitude faster than its normal, its rate of execution when you start it. So just be aware if you want it to run quickly, you should do it uh, through that uh, virtual, uh, virtual uh, uh, button there, virtual um, speed button, virtual time mode. Um, Often, the models can be interacted with um, visually, for example, dragging this around, and there's various ways. Sometimes parts of them can further be, um, uh, be interacted with, um, you know, like dragging around this, um, uh, this particular uh, map, for example. And um, uh, that, that can be useful at times. There, you can also zoom in. Um, if you want to see features in greater detail. So um, those are some sort of general pointers for exploring your way around. I guess I should say one or two more things um, that may be useful in exploring models. Um, one thing is over here on the left-hand side, this is actually a, a, a useful point, sometimes uh, basically, when I try to find something in a model, I do so in three different ways. This is useful. Um, students would sometimes save time if they knew about these um, uh, these stitches in time. Um, okay, so one of the ways is I find. Control F or Command F, I find things. And I find them by name. And it will often take me to where I need to go. A second way that I find it is by browsing around the canvas. So I know roughly where it is, and I'll kind of go down and find it. A third way in which I find things is over here on the left-hand side, I can expand things. For example, if I know it's something in the action chart, rather than browsing to the action chart, I can go and I can go here and expand this and expand that, and sometimes find things right in here. And there are times where it's more useful to do one or the other. Um, uh, where you're not quite sure where it is layout-wise, you can't remember its name really clearly, but you expand things hierarchically here and drill down into the model. Um, so just be aware there's some flexibility about how you get to things. So if you want to find something I'm showing on the screen, um, just be aware you can find it with control with Command or Control F. You can. Um, you can go and, and browse for it, or you can expand on the left-hand side and, and find it this way. So uh, those are all you know, useful ways of going and, and finding something to select so that you can see its properties, uh, et cetera. And if you double-click on it here, it'll actually bring, bring you to it. Um, so it, it, uh, it, it'll actually show you what it's, uh, what it's found. Okay, so these are useful ways of getting around in any logics interface that, regardless if you never use any logic again after this week, um, they should help you in exploring some of these models uh, in, in uh, starting the second.
Okay. Any questions related to this interface right now? There's a lot more features I'm obviously not talking about, but these are some of the most useful um, kind of uh, visual features uh, that will be depending on. Questions? Lunch was that filling, eh? Okay. Um, okay. So we'll um, we'll move on uh, with that fortified not only by our lunch, 